I'll get it. No, wait. Why am I answering doors? I promised myself I was going to be way more evil geniusy. I'll force one of my underlings to do it. Let me call up the duty roster on my handheld here. In a second! I'm looking for a slave! Oh, suds. I'll just default. Igor, get down here and answer the front door. Hi there, Dr. Handsome. How's your day going there, pudding cup? Come answer the door. Oh, no thanks. I have my hairy arms full up today of old macaronis with old bones, crab hearts, and some perfectly good underpants that somebody just threw out because they had a little bit of eye juice on them. Why do I even try? Is it because you believe in the possibles? Are you the dreamer we've all heard so much about? Goodbye. I'll get it myself. Who the hell? Oh, hi, Mr. Linkwinkle. Brian, you run this asylum. Please destroy the cloning machine and let me be the last one. No can do, Linky. I made four dozen mailmen, and I have plans for the use that are left. What sort of plans could you have? You keep killing me. I just want to be left alone or allowed to die, you madman. Oh, and here's your mail. It looks like you and that sex pervert you live with got fancy invites to something. Thanks, Mr. Linkwinkle. Destroy the machine. Have a shred of decency, for God's sake. Destroy the machine. Not a chance. Bye. Okay, what do we have here? Bills, summons, taco coupons. Ooh, my new driver's license. I'll open that later. What are these invites? Holy pipes. You have got to be kidding me. Ponch, are you anywhere in the castle? Hi, this is Ponch's Pilates. Call me Ponch. Quit fooling around, which I understand for you is a loaded statement. You have reached my castle voicemail. Please leave a detailed message at the tone. Unless, of course, you're Brian. In which case, go jump in the moat. Hello, Ponch. This is Brian. I am not jumping in the moat. You need to get back to me as soon as you can. We both received invitations to Sam and Linda's wedding. We received what? You were screening the intercom? I was in the middle of something. And you're nude. I was in the middle of something. Uh, here, put this on and then take a look at the invitation. Wow. I can really wear your Star Wars robe? Normally, no, but I don't feel like staring at your naked body. Ooh, this is comfy. I feel all warm, like the inside of a Klingon or something. Have you even seen Star Wars? Not all the way through. What? Every one of our generation has that movie series in their DNA. I went to see the films, but I always took a date, and we ended up making out five or six minutes into the movie. So I kind of don't know too much about Luke Skyhopper and his pals. Don't they go to a wizard school or some sort of thing? I hate you. I understand you have some mail for me? Here. You are cordially invited to attend the nuptials of Samuel Clemens Wolfe and Linda Danvers O'Hara. The wedding to be held at the castle, 2 Castle Road, unincorporated, by state area, 2 p.m. Brian, this says the wedding is on Saturday. This coming Saturday. What are we going to do? I don't think we have to do anything. Clearly, if they're sending out invitations, they've got everything already taken care of. This is Sam, remember? Shit, you're right. Come on, we need to look into this. Hello, lovely friends! Are you confused by how modern everything is these days? Technology, social media, virtual reality, and clones of all kinds... The times, they are a-changing, and if we don't change with them, then we might as well lie down and become food for the velociraptors that are sure to return. <laughs> hey, I'm Reverend Rabbi Father Dennis McFeinberg, and I want you to know that I'm here for you. I'm the up-to-the-minute man of the cloth who can answer your questions about faith and God and how they both fit into your life of tweeting, hashtagging, and playing whatever first-person shooter robs your lamp. <laughs> everything is everything today. With mixed marriages becoming the norm, I began to think the church, heck, all churches needed someone who could be all things to all people all the time. <laughs> and that someone is me. As a former Catholic priest, 
whose defrocking led him straight to rabbinical school, I can tell you the ups and downs of the calling can be brutal. But as my bubby used to say, when life gives you lemons, find a way to capitalize. And that's just what I've done. Are you Jewish, but you want to marry someone who is not? Or perhaps it's the other way around. If this is your dilemma, then I'm the man to call. <laughs> Let's dance a jig of a horror. By using a combination of internet ordination and clever workarounds, I have been able to appoint myself the first and only multi-dimensional officiant in the bi-state area. And as long as a certain Eastern European country doesn't change governments, it's all legal. <laughs> so call me today, set up your wedding. Baptism Scission or Quincyan Mitzvah, uh, dial 555-2368 or visit my office at the corner of Cherry and Galena in our fine city. And peace be with you, why not? <laughs>
How about a boat ride? A what? A boat ride, Skippy, on beautiful Lake Water Moccasin in our fine city. But isn't it filled with deadly aquatic snakes? What are you, some kind of pansy dancer? No, but I... Then man up and rent that boat. Prices start at a low $19 per hour. And you and your significant lady can cruise Lake Water Moccasin in a dinghy you row yourself. Meow. A rowboat? Can the snakes jump? You bet they can. And that just adds to the romance. How again? Rent your boat today at the Lake Water Moccasin launch office and show her just how much you want her business. Meow. You keep saying her and talking about men and women. What about gay couples? Don't they like boat rides? Are you kidding? Gay people aren't stupid enough to go anywhere near a lake teeming with venomous serpents. Hey. Call the Lake Water Moccasin launch office today and row your boat gently down the stream. Of dangerous snakes. Meow. Again. When a mix-up in paperwork accidentally wed two heterosexual bachelors, they thought things couldn't get worse. Then a judge told them they'd have to live together for a year until the clerical mess could be sorted out. But what's to keep them from killing one another while they wait? Those are just some of the problems Brian Hansen and Ponch Pilates face as groommates. Ponch, I told you to buy groceries. I did. But where's the meat, milk, and eggs? Brian, I'm a vegan, remember? I only bought vegetables. You only bought beets. And your colon will thank me. <laughs> Wacky! Brian, are you using my big plastic tub to grow baby alligators? Yeah. Why? I need them for my death pit. How else can I threaten my enemies? Well, you can't grow them in my big plastic tub. I use it to ferment organic kombucha. Well, at least now it smells better. <laughs> Ouch! Good morning, baby. Last night was amazing. Get your hand off me, Punch. Brian! What are you doing in my bed? And where's Cynthia? I accidentally disintegrated my bed with a death ray. Oh, and Cynthia took off after I made her breakfast. Brian! <laughs> set sexual equality and understanding back 100 years and set your dial to hilarity with The Groommates, Thursdays at 9 on KRFYN-TV. Meow. I am so nervous. Don't worry. You look great and you're doing fine. It is a bit concerning that we're the only groomsmen. Well, aside from us, Sam's only other male friend is his cousin, Warren. And he had to double as usher and ring bearer. What about Igor? Take a look at bridesmaid number two. Holy Zeus! Why is Igor dressed like a woman thing? Does Linda know? Yeah, she likes him. And when they asked if he wanted to participate, he said sure, providing he could choose how he took part in the wedding. So he chose Bridesmaid? Actually, he wanted to be the cake, but they settled on Bridesmaid. So glad I'm a vegan. So, so glad. It's starting. Wow, Linda looks beautiful. She sure does. be seated. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here in the sight of God, who is both vengeful and your friend, to join this man and this woman in the bonds of holy matrimony. Union is a blessed thing. Sure, being together can become an issue. Maybe she snores. Perhaps he chews kind of loud. Who knows? No one said it was a picnic. But love is what's important. Samuel and Linda were once separate souls, walking the earth, searching for the other half of their hearts. Then, upon meeting at an ATM in Little Brussels, their eyes locked and they figured, why not? 
and thought that maybe getting together might be a good thing. Oh, like a nice bowl of corn chowder on a cold day, or a beautiful serving of gefilte fish flavored mulligatawny stew. <laughs> Or perhaps it's like that old pair of socks that keep your feet toasty and warm when someone insists on leaving the window open. <clears throat> I digress. And a good thing their meeting was, because Samuel and Linda fell in love, and their love has brought them to this point. Now the happy couple would like to state to each other vows. They have written themselves. Samuel? Thank you, Dennis. Linda? When I look at you, I feel so many feelings that I know knowing you is not about knowledge as much as it is about feeling all the feelings my feelers can feel. My heart beats in my chest for you in a way that makes me realize that as long as it's beating, I'll stay alive. You do that to me by making me feel all the feelings I feel for you. I love you. Convoluted but touching. Damn it, Sam. You got me with that. And Linda, your vows... Yes. Hello, my name is Igor Stravinsky, call me Ted. I am the castle's hunchback servant as well as Linda's bridesmaid of Frankenstein. And I am speaking now because Linda has a touch of the hysterical Larry Jardis. Her throat is swolled up like a monkey's fist, and she can't talk worth a ding-dang-dong. I'm so sorry to hear that. Perhaps a bowl of chicken soup. <laughs> oh, you're so cute with that Jewish mother kind of thing you got going on. What a sweetum. No, right now, the focus is on the vowels uh, she has written to little Stan here. I shall read them for her, at least give you all the gist, if that's not too sexual. Uh, please proceed, Mr. Stravinsky. Thanks, Padre, you big rabbi, you. <clears throat> Ahem. My dearest Stan, you have the kind of faith... Only a hobo could love. That's why, when I saw you standing there by the record machine, I knew you must have been about 17. Your eyes locked on mine, and then, instead of calling the cops, I decided to ask you out to dinner and trampoline time at the Jump and Jive because I had a coupon. Since then, you have made me what I am today. A red-headed woman who wears just a little too much makeup for some people's taste, but is an otherwise nice person who never says a mean word about hunchbacks or castle slaves. Thanks for marrying me. Yours in Christ, Vince. The end. Uh, that was, uh, lovely? Yeah, I should have mentioned that I lost the bowels Linda wrote down, so uh, I just decided to wing it. I got those kind of skills, Dr. Priest, man. And so, now as Samuel and Linda exchange rings, we note that the ring is an unbroken circle, a symbol of love that uh, has no beginning and no end, a love that's inscribed with their names in fine 24 karat gold from Tramington Jewelers on the corner of Cherry and Galena in Arfine City. Do you, Samuel, take Linda to be your lawfully wedded wife? I do. And do you, Linda... Take Samuel to be your lawfully wedded husband. Um, yes, she sure does there, don't you know? Then, by the power vested in me by God, who is kind and loving, but will bring the wrath when he has to, and by the beautiful bi-state area, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. <laughs> A wee bit of the Talmud is being shared here, ladies and gentlemen. I present Samuel and Linda Wolf. And we'll be back to dance a horror jig right after this. And I'm Little Shaver, and I'm here to introduce Tumbleweed Town. It's a real old-timey western theme park with horses and wagons and gunfighters and such. Ever since the news shut them down for losing three kids in a mine shaft, the folks at Tumbleweed Town have been working really hard to get things all safe and purdy so that they could reopen. Now they've done it. They's made the roads dustier, the sarsaparilla colder, the Indians more Indianer, and everything better than it ever was. And all through summer, admission is just ninety-nine dollars. As my brother Big Bubba says, Whee! Uh, heck, I forget the rest. So won't you bring the whole family to Tumbleweed Town? It's in beautiful, our fine city. 
Take the 121.5 highway and get off when you see the big fat neon saloon whore. See you there. The other day on my way into the office, I saw a little kid being picked on by a much older teenager. I know bullying when I see it, so I pulled my car to the side of the road, grabbed my handheld punch to the face ray, and took care of business. But I can't be everywhere, and Seuss knows that Commodore Thundernuts has his girly hands full. So what are the picked on in today's world supposed to do? The Comachinka County Personal Protectorate has just the solution with Battle Apes. Funded through a generous donation from Toxicam and every brilliant yet spindly geek in the bi-state area, the Battle Ape program provides the chosen out and set upon with the opportunity to be defended. No more attempting to solve bullying problems on their own. Each person who applies and is accepted will be paired with an ape of their choosing. Said ape will defend its user whenever danger from bullying arises. The apes range from small and wiry chimps and bonobos to large and destructive gorillas and orangutans. And every simian in the Battle 8 program has been circus trained to fight like a berserker on amphetamines. So look out, thugs, your days are numbered. And the Battle 8 program is completely free to those who can show the bruises of earlier encounters with criminals and lowlifes. If you're afraid to go to school, work, or the corner for a bottle of milk, then call the Comachinga County Personal Protectorate today and sign up for the Battle 8 program. Why continue to get your ass kicked when you can have an ape fight your battles for you? Oh, I almost forgot. Some of the apes in the program also sexually assault their opponents. So there's that. Igor, that was a beautiful ceremony. It sure was there, Dr. Handsome, and it was really nice of you to pay for Stan and Glenda's honeypot in Hawaii. I'm happy to do it. They deserve a quiet vacation. Plus, they can water the plants in my summer house while they're staying there. Oh, <laughs> this line of dialogue is just to take up space, isn't it? Well, guys, we're off. See you tomorrow. Okay, Ponch, just where are you off to? And are those two of Linda's bridesmaids? Yeah, meet Kimberly and brown-haired girl. Gabrielle. Whatever. And why exactly are you dressed like pantsless Han Solo and two slutty Princess Leia's? We're going to the Star Wars convention in Atro City. I attend every year. Igor, put on Dr. Handsome's robe and join us. Oh, I'd be happy to, there, Poshy. You'll do no such thing. Ponch, I thought you didn't know anything about Star Wars. Earlier today, you... Uh, I am confused. Brian, we're the same generation, remember? Star Wars is in the blood, baby. I was just having a laugh at your expense. Very funny. So, now if you'll excuse me, Kimberly, what's her name, and I have to make the Wookiee with three backs. <laughs> Ooh, the Force is strong in this one. See you, Brian. I hate him sometimes, Igor. Oh, Dr. Hansoap, no hating today. This is a time for love. Stan and Limba got married. Posh is off having disgusting sex with two girls he just met. And you and I are finally alone, so that we may explore the mystery that is our enormously erotic connection. Touch my leg, Scar. Punch! Wait up! I'll grab my Darth Vader suit! Sideshow Lounge is produced by Hello Cowboy Productions. All rights reserved. Hello, Cowboy! It's Dance a Jig of a Horror!